I'm going to ask you about some modern wrestling. How do you feel about it? I hear you're a big fan of Adam Cole. <laughs> Where did you hear that at? Uh, when we were talking a couple of days ago. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say the wrong things, meaning like it's just, I guess I grew up in a different era and I understand that wrestling evolves and things change and you can't have the same body types. And, uh, you know, if everyone was built the same, it'd be boring. You got to have giants and midgets and body bodies, you know, good built bodies and you gotta have fat people and skinny people. And, you know, you gotta have a mixture of things, but, and I know it's not a bodybuilding contest and, you know, uh, but I don't know. It's just, it's, I, I, I try to, suspend my disbelief just like I would going to a movie and and I really want to be captivated by what I see on the on on the screen when I'm watching these some of these guys today and I I just I, I guess he's he's so over which is awesome good for him he might be the greatest guy in the world I don't know him and I've watched some of his work and he seems you know I mean it seems decent you know um I guess just physically though I just um I'm distracted by it so much that maybe I'm missing I'm like, what am I missing here? I don't under, I don't really quite understand the connection with the crowd. Like he is over. I mean, when he does that Adam Cole, baby, I mean, it's loud in there, man. That's awesome. He's doing something right in today's era and today's generation of fans. So God bless him and good for him. But I don't know. I, I, I need to watch him more to try to understand. I watched him last night and um, I, I still, I don't, I don't know what, what the appeal is, but He's a, he, maybe you can tell me, I don't know. Um, I know you watch wrestling and everything and you're the same as me. You're a big Jim Cornette fan. I'm a big Jim Cornette fan. I, I believe we both sort of subscribe more to Jim's point of view than maybe let's say Tony Khan's. Just to, uh, to uh, pluck a name out of the air for someone who's, uh, you know, very involved in the modern uh, wrestling. Uh, with WWE, with AEW, what you've seen, what do you like about them, uh, both companies and what, uh, would you prefer uh, go back to sort of a bygone era? Um, yeah, Jim is definitely a polarizing figure, isn't he? You mm -hmm. either love him or you don't. I think he's personally, I can see why he's got a lot of heat, but, um, I agree with a lot of things he says, man. It just makes sense to me about psychology and storylines and what he would do. He always gives examples to me. It's like, he, that's a source that if you want to, and, and of course the people might disagree and say, well, he's, it's past his time. He doesn't get today's wrestling. And I get that. It's a different era. It's a different generation. Um, just like, you know, with the Adam Cole thing, the Daniel Bryans, I mean, these are smaller guys, but I, I get Daniel Bryan. I, I get that. But, um, and I get CM Punk now. I didn't at first, but I get him now. because He's so real, so authentic, uh, authentic, organic, that connection with the crowd. I like the realism of pro wrestling. And I think that's the magic of pro wrestling is when you can take reality parallels and you can intertwine that with the fiction and the work. And then the smart marks or you're at home going, I know this is pro wrestling and it's, it's set as choreographed, but I, I think there's some real emotion here. And then you question things when you start blurring the lines. I love that. To me, that's, that's great TV. That's magic. Um, and I like, I like, I think Jim's funny. I can see why he ruffles some feathers. I don't agree with everything he says. Um, some of his political comments, I'm a, no comment, but anyway, point being is, um, I think he's got, he's a wealth of knowledge. And I think even his ideology and his beliefs of how wrestling should be portrayed, I agree with. And I think that today's product could learn a lot from him. Just listening to that, that podcast, they could get a lot of ideas where, I mean, I know if I was wrestling right now, I'd be listening to that podcast every time to see what he does say about my matches and critiques me and gives examples and what I would have done. And it makes you think, I mean, for the next time, or you just pick up things, you know, this is just, it's just to me, you know, it's great knowledge. Um, others will say he's, he's stuck in the eighties or whatever, and it's not going to work in today's wrestling, but I disagree with that. There's this basic psychology. There's a reason why you do things when you do them to make sense, uh, I just, I, I think he's um, a wealth of knowledge, but um, you know, I don't really, I, I watch uh, both shows. I record them. I go through my DVR and I'll, I just, I, I, I stop it when I see Randy Orton. I want to see what they're doing with Randy uh, Brock. Whenever Brock's out, I'm, I have the utmost respect for Brock. And I love, I, I, again, I love realism, you know, um, I don't, 
I like Bobby Lashley too. I mean, these guys are just, you know, I guess they're larger than life. They're real athletes. They're, you know, they're it just, a, it's what I I'm attracted to, I guess. I'm just curious to see what they, they do with these guys, but it's, it's difficult for me to get through a full show. A lot of times uh, with AEW, I I'm excited for them. I think it's great that there's a, you know, they say it's not competition, but a wrestling fan can only spend so much money on pay-per-views and merchandise or whatever. So in essence, is, is it competition? Yes and no. Uh, I think that, um, you know, it's definitely growing. Uh, they've got a lot of talent. Seems like they're every other week, there's a new talent coming aboard. I think they have to be careful of not being spread too thin. I think they have enough talent to work on and focus on and try to develop and get over. Um, I see, I do see a lot of mistakes and things that they make, uh, you know, if, like I said, I agree with uh, some of the things that Cornette says, but um, I'm just excited, man. I'm, I'm really excited for the, the pro wrestling business and, and I just, I'm pulling for them. I hope that they have all the success in the world because that's great for the boys or the girls too, the talent. It's good for the wrestling fan. Uh, that's who wins the most, right? As a wrestling fan. And uh, it's just good for business overall. So between the two products, um, you know, I just, I don't really, I, I don't watch WWE so much. Uh, I will tune into NXT only. And I'm giving a shout out to uh, Teresa, Zoe Stark. She's like a sister to me, her and Tom Howard. Tom's her, um, you know, other half and and they're, I love them both. And so I'm always pulling for her. I'll watch her segment, but I, it's hard for me to get through that show too, man, honestly. <laughs> so um, that's my take on today's product. You know, I'm, I'm looking to be captivated and I want, I, I want to feel moved when the CM Punk debut happened a few weeks ago. Um, I was so moved by that just because of the authenticity, the crowd reaction, the organicness, just the realism, man. It was emotional because it was, I don't know. It just had a, such a realism to it. That was just awesome, man. And you know, the stars were aligned, right? They could not have done that any different, you know, Chicago, seven years away. Um, it was just awesome to see. I was just, just a happy, those, those moments are very far and few between. Um, and, um, that's why we all got into this business so we could create and be part of those moments. Exactly. I'll ask you one very brief wrestling question. Then I will uh, throw to you for plugs and uh, what, uh, what have you been doing since wrestling, of course. Um, I think uh, when we're going into modern wrestling, so many of the old smart marks, uh, to coin the uh, coin, it's not coining phrase, it's already a phrase that's out there, will say that Goldberg was terrible. And I say Goldberg, I mean, the Bret Hart kick withstanding, Goldberg was awesome. He drew money like almost nobody else. He was as real as it got. I mean, where's your opinion on, let's say, Goldberg? For uh, somebody who can really... Someone who's just missing in today's product. Well, that you know, he got started uh, at a time that was... I mean, you know, look, the stars have to be aligned. Uh, look, you can be the greatest talent, have a great look, have charisma, um, have great skills, and you can even have a legacy name. You can have all these tools, accolades, you know, um, and, and all these elements to be uh, as the, the ingredients for an award-winning stew, so to speak, right? But if you don't have the right chef or, you know, the right person to put this all together, and in this case, the, the person with the power of the pen, they're, they're going nowhere. So I think was in the case of someone like Goldberg, he had a great look. He was a real athlete. He had a, a intensity and a believability about him. And I think Bill, you know, Bill is, is no pushover for in, re, in real life. I think, um, you know, and he had a lot of help along the way. You know, he was green. That's why they kept his, they protected him by keeping his matches short, quick, but explosive. Um, I, I think, you know, more characters like that. I'm, I, I love that. I love that element of a character. So I think that when Goldberg has come back the last, you know, what, handful of years, he's made these appearances at these big, you know, WrestleMania, uh, these pay-per-views overseas. Uh, there's an element to him that it, I just don't see in today's wrestling product. You know, it's, um, I, I, and I love Roman Reigns, for instance. I, I, I'm uh, Drew McIntyre. You know, big, good-looking dudes with you know charisma and a look and a cadence they look like about badasses. It. They look like badasses, and so few people yeah. do. They could be casted in a movie. I'm looking at these guys going, man. I can't see how a Hollywood director would look at these guys and think, man, they can they can definitely play some of those like the, uh, you know, some of those. I don't know. Three. Well, help me out here. 
what are some of those movies? Um, James Bond villain, let's say. I'm, I'm talking like uh, gladiators and stuff okay. like that. I see, I see Drew McIntyre and same with, with, with Rome and um, even Seamus, you know, as, as pale as he is, <laughs> I like Seamus, uh, but he, you know, they just, I got, again, I'm, I'm referring to some, I guess, larger than life characters. And look, I just grew up in that era where, again, you don't have to be the biggest guy in the world, but Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, those guys weren't the biggest guys, but I still they had a believability about them that just still drew me in, that it was believable, you know? I'm not saying, look, I think the cruiserweight division and a division for smaller uh, statured people, it should be just as prestigious as a heavyweight, uh, like in boxing, you got Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor. These are guys that are smaller guys, but they're it's very prestigious. Why not? I think that division is, you know, something appropriate for those types of builds and statures. It's just hard to believe that, you know, that they're heavyweight world champions. Um, and, and I know, again, people say, come on, Sean, it's pro wrestling. It's like a movie. It's a script. I get it. But I think it's lost fans over the years on, it's just like, you know, this is nonsense. Um, I don't know. 